Turn with me to Esther chapter 9 and we shall read verse 22. As the days were uh, wherein the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of fe uh, feasting and joy and of sending portions out to another and gifts to the poor. We are going to speak about this month. We have come to the last month of this year. <coughs> Here it says, this is the month wherein the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day. And the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day. When I was in prayer, even on the first week of this month, the Lord has given me this as a promise to the church. Last morning we had a blessing service here and it was really wonderful. The Lord spoke to the church. And yesterday I was hard pressed for time, packed with a lot of activities, physically worn out. But when I went into the presence of God, very clearly the Lord drew me, drew my spirit to this powerful passage. Not because this is the twelfth month, but when the Lord gave me this passage, it was very striking. And the month, which was that month, that twelfth month, and the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies. In the name of Jesus I tell you, this is the month you are going to rest from your enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy. In the name of Jesus I tell you, this is the month which will turn unto you from sorrow to joy. How many of you believe it? I don't hear any yes. I don't hear any Amen. I don't hear any praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the month which, was, which will turn unto you from sorrow to joy. And this is the month which will turn unto you from mourning into a good day. This month will turn unto you from mourning to a good day. What a powerful thing it is. That they should make 
them days of feasting and joy why should you make this month a, a, a days of feasting and joy because the lord will turn your sorrow to joy because the lord will turn your mourning to a good day so you should make the days of feasting and joy and of sending portions a gift one to another and gift to the poor my dear brother my dear sister it is not because it's in the calendar it is not because it's a tradition many a time this social pressure or the pressure of the tradition we have feast we want to buy new dress and instead of those things turning us from mourning to joy by then spending all the money we turn ourselves from joy to mourning generally they call december 26 a boxing day in many houses literally it's a boxing day many houses literally it's a boxing day in some culture because they say it's a christmas is a jolly day christ is born and they feel that they should drink on that day uh i really feel very bad to say this when we didn't know the truth on christmas they used to give a small cup of wine to every one of us it's a christmas you should drink wine then later they are just giving a small sip of brandy oh it's christmas we should drink but later i understood this satanalia was celebrated for the god of liquor it is celebrated for the god of liquor on december 25 so this was the habit to take a lot of liquor on december 24 that is a festivity of night satanalia yule's day nothing to do with christmas so because it was the day of god of wine or saraya kadavul if i say god of wine it sounds very elegant because this is the day for saraya kadavul so people take a lot of liquor they go for dance buy a costly dress suit spend all that money and boxing day they will have literal boxing and on the 27th some people will sell their suit some people will pledge their suit december 25 they go to the church with all jewelry to start the new year they have to again pledge the jewels no our feasting is not based on tradition our feasting is not based on social pressure our feasting is because the lord has turned my sorrow to joy and from morning into a good day if the lord has not turned your sorrow to joy there is no meaning for feast so here we see it was the month in which the lord turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of feasting not just one day make this day the days of feasting and joy sending portions one to another so you prepared biryani you gave to your akka your akka prepared some uh, what can i say tandoori she gives to the tangachi send portions one to another and gifts to the poor and gifts to the poor and don't forget your pastor is the days of joy the days of mourning why because your sorrows are turned into joy because your mourning is turned into a good day what is the historical background we read from yester chapter 9 verse 1 we had to read the whole chapter for that we don't have whole book for that i do believe that you know the bible very well at least i take it for granted verse 9 a uh, chapter 9 verse 1 now in the 12th month and their 12th month is not december their 12th month is not december december is actually the 10th month deci means 10 you all surprised to know these things september is the 7th october is the 8th octo 8th november is 9th December is the 10th 11th and 12th are months of festivity 
So their twelfth month is not the December, but now the twelfth month is December. Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Ada, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to, uh, to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. How many of you know very well the history or the story of Esther? Let me see your hands. Just a few hands. Okay. Now this was in the land of Persia. The Jews were slaves there. It was in the palace of Susha. There was a Persian general by name Haman. And Mordecai was a slave there. A slave soldier. So Mordecai was not doing namaste. Not just a salutation. Not worshipping Haman as others were worshipping this Haman. So this general was very angry. This slave fellow, he is not doing namaste to me. He is not worshipping me. He is not saluting me as we salute a God. He was very much anointed over him. That time the king wanted somebody for his uh, harem next to, I mean, because he wanted to replace his wife Asti. So they have found Esther and Esther has become the queen. Esther is the niece of this Mordecai. So she is in the palace but she has not even been ushered to the king yet. So what this Hammam thought, I should kill not only the, why this Mordecai is not doing Namaste to me? And somebody said, oh, this Mordecai is from the tribe of Jews. The Jews will not do Namaste to any man. As long as Mordecai is a Jew, he will not do Namaste to you. So Mordecai said, the Amam is angry. Oh, this is the custom of the Jews. I should destroy all the Jews. Since he was general, he has got a permission from the king. And the king permitted, okay, destroy all the Jews. In all 127 countries. Is it the custom of Jews? We are going to destroy all the Jews. And the degree was given all over the, uh, all over his kingdom. Up to India this degree was given. All Jews must be killed. Anybody nearby can kill the Jews. An open degree was given. Everywhere crying and lamentation. Everywhere their life was in danger. So this man thought in one day all over the kingdom of Persia the Jews must be slaughtered. One day. So they, what date can be? He and his sons, they, uh, they are sitting and discussing. Uh, they have put the lot, probably to, in the presence of their gods. Give me a date on which all Jews can be destroyed. The lot fell on the 13th. 13th of the 12th month. Probably it was in the presence of their god. So this degree was given on the 13th of the 12th month all Jews must be killed. Nobody can revert that degree. Nobody could revert that degree. Everybody was crying and weeping. The days were drawing nigh. The Jews are going to be killed. So Esther fasted, Mordecai fasted, everybody fasted and prayed. All Jews, another degree was given. All Jews, you fast and pray. Now there is a crisis. What can we do in this crisis? We are left with only one option than running to the king of kings. Running to the king of kings. The order is all Jews must be destroyed. What can I do? We'll run to the king of kings. <coughs> So they all the Jews started fasting and praying. They are hoping against the hope. Because they put the lot in Persian language that's called Pur. That's in many places. <coughs> they originally thought the 13th of any month is a wicked, it's an evil day. Especially it came from the Jewish custom. And the 13th of December is a very evil day. No, not for us. 
some people say that is because 13 disciples no 13th of december was fixed to kill all jews today that's not an evil day that's a day of joy for us so they all were fasting and praying now the lord uh, tilted the scale this degree was reverted now god showed to the king through some log book some annals some diary that the jews were really loyal to their king and mordecai was really saved the life of king at one time the lord brought that to the notice of uh, king agazras so now mordecai was given the second in the land position esther became the queen and they said do what you want to do do what you want to do so they changed the degree on the same day of december 13 the degree was reverted and given in that jews would be killed jews would kill their enemies jews could kill their enemies and they killed hama they killed all his 10 sons on the same day on which their gods probably gave that poor that lot on the same day all the enemies of jews are destroyed that is why that festival is called even today they celebrate that festival purim they celebrate that festival purim because that came from the word poor poor means lot chitu potu they caused lots and fixed the date december 13 on that day the lord changed that degree against them that's what we uh, uh, we read here in verse 1 in the latter part though it was turned to the contrary that the jews had rule over them that hated them so verse 2 the Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Agassiras, even in India, 127 nations, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt. They wanted to destroy the people who wanted to destroy the Jews. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, you are going to destroy the things which sought you to destroy. We are, our fight is not against flesh and blood. In the name of Jesus, prophetically I tell you, debts, debts, debts try to destroy your life. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to, I tell you, you are going to destroy debts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sickness was trying to destroy you, trying to hurt you, and you are going to hurt sickness. Habits, addictions, addiction to liquor, addiction to uh, drugs, addiction to bad habits, uh, destroying your health, destroying your income, destroying your family. Here the Bible says, what sought to hurt you, you are going to destroy that. How many of you believe it? I don't hear, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Huh? Hallelujah, what a wonderful, powerful promise. It, I feel like jumping. Here it says, uh, the Jews gathered themselves together in their cities. Now the Lord tells me, as a family, you will gather together in your houses. As a church, we will gather together in the prayer house. Throughout all the provinces of the king, the king of kings. Agazarus, here it's king of kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. To lay hand on such as sought their head. Whatever that has sought, you are hurt, you will destroy them. And no man could withstand thee, for the fear of them fell upon all people. No power can withstand against you. Do you think disease, death, addiction can withstand against you? No. No power can withstand against you. Verse 3. And the rulers of the provinces 
and the lieutenants and the deputies and officers of the king help the jews in this month you are going to see the people of the world they will come to help you i don't hear you shouting hallelujahs how many of you believe it i had to ask you again and again i am wasting my time hallelujah the people of the world the rulers your officer your manager the deputies the deputy general manager the lieutenants maybe your team leader the production manager the rulers the lieutenants the deputies all will come to help you because the fear of mordekai fell upon them if the fear of mordekai could make them help the jews how much the fear of jesus would make them help us hallelujah verse 4 for, for mordekai was great in the king's house in the name of jesus i tell you in your office in the midst of your relatives you are going to be great hallelujah clap your hands and worship the lord you are going to be great in the king's house and his fame and his fame went out throughout all the provinces everybody will begin to talk about ah oh, we know this wonderful pajo asalm a really great pa your fame will go through all the provinces very powerful and this man mordekai are you just read this man james this man uh, robi yuvraj this man silvanus waxed greater and greater it is not becoming uh, growing in the x axis greater in name greater in fame you are going to wax greater and greater you are going to wax greater and great so this is a wonderful thing so 917 i want to read the whole portion 917 on the 13th day of the month adar on the 13th day of the month adar and on the 14th day of the same Uh, and on the 14th day of the same rested day and made it a day of feasting and gladness what does it mean on the 13th day they slaughtered all their enemies who all your enemies don't say past is our enemy now we don't have fight. don't say my mother in law is my enemy mother in law is god given mother tree probably you are with your mother for uh, 25 years Now you are going to be with your mother-in-law for the rest of your life. And mother-in-law should also stay, remember it. Your daughter was with you for say 20 years or 25 years. Your daughter is gone away. Your daughter-in-law is going to take care of you for the rest of your life. The relationship between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law is greater than the relationship between mother and daughter. I don't know, the devil is trying to destroy it. the mother is looking after the daughter maybe for the la- uh, for the last 20 years from the time of birth giving uh, bathing the child uh, dressing up taking to the hospital sending to the school the mother was taking care of the daughter even the school days the child was getting ready for the exam the mother was feeding the child running till the marriage the mother looked after the child and dear mother in your old age only your daughter in law is going to look after you your daughter in law is going to give you the food your daughter is gone somewhere to feed that another lady This is how God has planned it. The daughter-in-law is going to look after the mother-in-law and the mother only looked after the daughter. Mother looked after the daughter, daughter-in-law will look after the mother-in-law. So don't consider them enemies. They are our friends. God given gifts. So then who is our enemy? 
may be debt bad habits fighting quarreling this month we are going to destroy all the bad habits so that is why uh, on the 13th of this month don't wait for the 13th even today you can start it <laughs> destroy all your bad habits and on the 14th rest from all your struggles from all your tears from all your fear rest 14th was the rest day of rest so it is not rest means some people for rest is sleeping is the rest rest is not sleeping on the 14th day of the same that is on the 12th month rested day what do you mean by rested made it a day of feasting and gladness resting means don't go and sleep that's a day of sickness only sick people will like to go and sleep that day you have to make cake you have to make biryani you have to make sandwich you have to make etc 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 64 dishes make a big feast it is not on december 25 for saturnalia have a feast because you have got victory over your enemies have a feast because your sorrow is turned into joy have a feast because the lord is making you great have a feast that the lord has given the favor of other people have given favor in the sight of the other people have a feast because you have overcome your temper because you have overcome your anger because you have overcome your evil nature because you have overcome your bad habits because you have overcome your uh, addiction from computer or facebook because you have overcome from your peer pressures you have got a victorious life my dear brother my dear sister we need victory we should do something because we are slaves of the lord we need not do something because my peers pressurize me because my friends pressurize me i got victory i got everything right to do everything but everything may not be expedient unto me i can't be slave to anything i want to do what god wants me to do when you have the victory that's your celebration verse 18 but the jews that were in susan assembled together on the 13th day thereof and on the 14th day thereof and on the 15th day of the same they rested and made it the day of feasting and gladness so in susan in the capital city they slaughtered the people for two days 13th and 14th so they have made 15th of this uh, the 10th uh, 12th month their feast day so later it become 14th and 15th of the 12th month feast days was 19 therefore the jews of the village that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month adar a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and of sending portions one to another and mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all jews that were in all the provinces of the king agasarus both nigh and far to establish this among them that they should keep the 14th day of the month ada and the 15th day of the same yearly as the days wherein the jews rested remember the day of your salvation remember the day that you have found victory over your bad habits remember the day that you are able to throw your anger away remember the day that you have come out of your debts remember the day where your sorrow is turned into joy it is not just remembering saturnalia it is not just remembering yule's day it is remembering the day that you have come out of your darkness to light Remember the day that you are you are, you are delivered from your addiction. Remember the day when your sorrow is turned into joy. Remember the day where your mourning is turned into a good day. Remember the day from all your vexation you found rest in Christ. And the month which was turned into them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day. that they should make them days of feasting and joy and sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor my dear brother my dear sister
it is really wonderful the lord want to turn your sorrows to joy and that is the days of your feasting they are the days of gladness call your neighbors call your friends share your testimony the lord turned my sorrow into joy the lord turned my mourning into a good day the lord turned my loss into profit the lord turned my bitterness in sweetness the lord turned my night into light the lord turned my darkness into brightness celebrate it with others tell this testimony i was in slavery i was in bondage the sin was putting me in chains chains which i repine chains which i uh, i don't like i was doing things which i don't like there was no peace in my life my family was disturbed because of me because i was smoking because i was taking liquor because i was not obeying my parents because i'm i'm in debt there was no happiness all what i earned i gave to interest there was no joy there was no good food we didn't have money to buy milk we were taking our food in tears my father shouted at me my mother shouted at me i was weeping and weeping and eating i didn't feel like eating i tried to gulp i could not gulp i was feeling vomiting i threw my food and went i was filled with sorrow in the name of jesus i tell you your days of feasting is when the lord will turn your sorrows into joy when the lord will turn your mourning into a day of uh, into a good day when you are able to destroy the things which are trying to destroy your happiness when you are able to destroy the things which are destroying your health when you are able to destroy the bad habits the dis- the spirit of disobedience the spirit of blindness the spirit of wickedness the day that you can destroy those spirits which were destroying you you got real happiness they are the days of your feast they are the days of your celebration call your friends tell me call your neighbors celebrate with them tell them give them the testimony it is not just because 2000 years ago jesus was born it is because jesus has set you free from your bondage my dear brother my dear sister you are in debt you buy more debts take new clothes buy more debts get into more debts have a feast get into more debts buy more jewelry devilish sinking more and more more into destruction the joy of feast is the deliverance jesus said john 16:20 Verily verily I say unto you John 16:20 Verily verily I say unto you that you shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice because of your spirit of disobedience because of the spirit of stubbornness because of the spirit of addiction because of some spirit you weep and lament the world shall rejoice your friends will rejoice my dear brother my dear sister i don't know whether it was yesterday or sometime just as i was toggling through the television channels um uh, a program a debate came near nana and it was really surprising a few minutes i watched that broke my heart really i cried to the lord lord what can i do in that program the children were saying what all the evil things they would do because of their peer pressure because of their friends 
what are the evil things they would do because they want to give some special gifts to their friends on their days many children said because we want to buy good gifts to our friends they rob from their parents it is a terrible peer pressure and that anchor person very firmly said uh, i was not seeing that to the conclusion i could not bear it god is a witness i don't know whether my wife noticed or not for a few minutes i saw that program i just rushed into my room i was broken i said lord what can i do he said the anchor person said don't think that you are ple- trying to please your friends you are causing only enmity and he quoted a few instances how friends stab one another after bad day they fight recently that happened after a bad day parties the boys started hitting one another and the hoteliers they threw these boys out they were standing and fighting one another one boy stabbed the other person it was they all were friends after a bad day party so you bought a gift for 500 rupees then i should buy a gift for 1000 rupees if i give a gift to 1000 rupees for my bad day naturally this guy lost what will he give me for my bad day so this girl has given a gift for 1000 rupees the girl that has received that gift now she is compelled to give a gift for 1100 rupees hey i gave you this what are you going to give or at least this girl expects yes do you have that expectation yes when i give i expect now he said this commercialism is building a building up and building up and he said the society will be destroyed the society will be destroyed the anchor person said mr gopinath i think it was yesterday or sometime i, I mean generally i don't i heard about these uh, programs brother sister that's not the joy that's weeping that's lamentation He asked one boy, he, uh, he took thousand rupees from his father to give a gift to his friend. So this anchor, I don't know why I say this all of a sudden. So the anchor person asked him, what is the gift you bought for him? He said, I bought him some books. Oh, everybody laughed. So he said, no, 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 don't, I, I, everybody knows that you are lying. What is it you really bought for that thousand rupees? he said i got him liquor he robbed the money from father's atm to buy liquor for a friend i could see the father was broke and he asked the father do you know that your son bought liquor for his friend uh, he would buy for others but he won't drink probably the father was cheated to a greater extent brother weeping lamenting distraction they call this peer pressure i have studied that in psychology now i'm talking about victories i just i know how much there was a pain in my heart yesterday what a great pain it was in my heart my dear brother my dear sister the real joy is in victory not succumb to pressure in every age in every situation every believer has faced social pressure and peer pressure during my ba in my post graduation i got saved i know what was the peer pressure i know what was the peer pressure i was a college student with the experience of salvation more than i could say of myself i could say of pastor samsundaram studied in the most reputed pachepas college he was a believer the nickname for him was a hey, swami varanda all those who teased at him we don't know about them 
But thousands and thousands, tens of thousands will know Pastor Sam Sundara. When I was working, I had peer pressure. In my society, I had peer pressure. Because I want to stand for the truth. For my marriage, for our marriage. My elder sister and her family, my, my brother-in-law, they didn't come. My second brother-in-law didn't come. Just because I want to stand for the truth, was there no social pressure for me? I'm not just standing in the pulpit and telling you something. I've gone through peer pressure, I've gone through social pressure. What could have been my mother's situation at that day when two of her daughters are not, uh, two of her sons-in-law, one daughter and the family not coming for the marriage of their youngest son? How much my mother would have felt that? How much my father would have felt that? We had social pressure. In my college days, I had peer pressure. I can do everything what I want to do, but everything may not be expedient unto me. Everything may not be expedient unto me. The real celebration is your victory. If the real celebration is your victory, don't be a dead fish. Don't succumb to others' pressure. Don't try to do something because others say, even today I got peer pressure. When I see other pastors, when I see other churches, when I see what others can do, I can also do. I can have a project, I can have an orphanage. If somebody can write a report in project, in English I can write it better. If somebody can write a letter to a sponsor, I can write it better. I'm not speaking, I'm not bragging about it. But I don't want to be that somebody. I don't want to be that somebody. My dear brother, my dear sister, if somebody can be a world, a world totter with my English, with my Tamil, with my Bible knowledge, I can be a world totter. I'm not against anybody. I want to be myself. I want to be myself. My dear brother, my dear sister, for the glory of God, I tell you, and probably uh, to some extent Robbie will know and others, those who are with me, they know, last month, how much I suffered for every paisa. It is not because I didn't know the way to mint money. My dear brother, my dear sister, no, neither I am slothful. There is pressure. There is pressure. I tell all young and old, your celebration is your victory. Victory over peer pressure, victory over social pressure, victory over any type of pressure. Give to all this pressure and you get blood pressure. With all this pressure you get blood pressure. And you lose pleasure. When you get pressure, you lose pleasure. There's no celebration. You could not even eat your normal breakfast happily. What is this life? You could not bless the Lord for your food and eat. There is no table set. Father, mother, children could not enjoy. Is that a life? Husband and wife, they could not eat together. My dear brother, my dear sister, celebration is not because it's in the calendar. It should be in the annals of your calendar. It should be in your calendar. You know the day when you are saved. You must know the day when you come out of your addiction. You must know the date when you come out of your slavery. You must know the date when you come out of your bondage from debts. My dear brother, my dear sister, The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. If I tell you this, bear with me, I am still in the introduction. The world may rejoice. When you buy a gift for somebody, they will rejoice. But you are weeping to buy that gift. You are fighting in your house to buy that gift. 
through their pains probably their parents are giving that money to buy that gift and it is surprising i never knew that they would do like this somebody said i robbed money and bought a phone for 20000 rupees to my friend horrible 20000 rupees maybe from a rich family duped fathers eight year if this girl a boy could buy a phone for 20000 rupees or 10000 rupees or 6000 rupees to his friend it is not the sign of friendship it is a pure business certainly for his birthday or her birthday she or he would expect something greater if they don't buy enmity will come the rank of person said mr gopinath said stop giving gifts to your friends on their birthdays if at all you want to show your love just greet them i send a greeting i give them a toffee from your legitimate pocket money if your friend cannot accept that chocolate your friend cannot accept that greeting accept that xms and value you what is that friend that friend cannot accept your greeting that friend cannot accept your uh, uh, sms your friend expects something bigger maybe he expects a pant shirt or churidar or a phone or a uh, tablet that friend loves your gift then loves you it's a simple logic my dear brother my dear sister the real celebration is victory over every type of pressure and jesus said then you shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice but a day comes you shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy ungal dukkam sandosham amaru when i was just meditating on this verse i remember one of our dear brothers i had this text in my house ungal dukkam sandosham amaru he came and read that ungal thookam sandoshamai maaru hallelujah both are true last night i thought both are true avar dukkam sandoshamai maarano thookam sandoshamai maarano and jesus said in verse 21 a woman when she is in travail had sorrow because her hour is come but as soon as she is delivered of the child as soon as she is delivered of the child she remembereth no more the anguish for the joy that a man is born into the world when you hear this to give up that addiction to give up your favorite tv show to give up that cinema or to give up that liquor that may seem to be painful but when you are delivered when you are delivered when you know that a man is born this speaks about a deliverance you will forget that sorrow and you now therefore have sorrow but i'll see you again and your heart shall rejoice when jesus meets you the risen savior will meet you your heart shall rejoice your joy no man take it from you hallelujah no father can take it from you no mother can take it from you no friend can take it from you no world can take it from you that is joy unspeakable joy unspeakable no money can take this joy from me last night uh, uh, last morning the first morning the message is walnalala magalnd kaligur walnalala kaligur nu magale that's the greatest joy in all your days you'll rejoice in the name of jesus i tell you weeping and gnashing of the teeth crying fighting quarreling bickering what is feasting no not eating not eating where is feasting 
from the feasting he is taken only fasting he is gone he understand what he he is gone so the feasting has become fasting no more he you can say he to your daddy you can say he to your mommy you can say he to your husband you can say he to your wife when he the lord is going to change everything in this month this is going to the month of puri in exodus chapter 3 verse 7 and the lord said i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and heard their cry by the reason of their taskmaster for i know their sorrows who rashan but the lord tells in this morning i know your sorrows why were the people in sorrow because they were in bondage the moment you find deliverance you will not be sorrowful when the lord gave them deliverance the lord is delivering them from their sorrow but that physical deliverance was not solving their problem they were slave to water because there was no water they were crying they were slave to non vegetarian food because they non vegetarian food they were crying and they were slaves to power power mongers because moses was the leader aaron was the leader they wanted to have power so they were sorrowful and they were going like behind the pagan god they were sorrowful just deliverance from egypt was not solving their problem the spiritual deliverance alone can solve their problems though they were delivered from taskmaster there was weeping and gnashing of teeth because of unbelief there is weeping and gnashing of teeth because they went adultery there was weeping and gnashing of teeth because they were worshiping idols there was weeping and gnashing of teeth because they turned against moses how was that i don't have time to explain everything just see that just imagine they say oh only moses should be the leader ah oh, why we should also be the leader somebody told me about uh, just like this why pastor is saying always his name for anything and everything only he calls him and not only this man his wife told him pastor ungalalla kanale theriyala avare mattum dhan theriy edukadathalum avare dhan koopudrar koyilla kuda avar vera dhan solrar appo adhukku bayande ellar perum solli palakra this man started weeping And he came and told me, my wife is saying like this. My dear brother, my dear sister, we get all interesting problems. Oh, only Moses and Aaron, are we not leaders? Destruction came upon the whole family. Suddenly there must be weeping, gnashing of teeth. As long as you don't have victory over these things. Adultery. so many thousands were killed idolatry they are killed your spiritual deliverance alone can give you joy i know you are sorrows why are you sorrowful young man young girl brother sister because you are a slave to something because you are in slavery i know you are sorrowful because you say oh my daughter in law is not loving me my mother in law is not loving me your slavery christ is christ loves you your real celebration is have your victory over your sorrows psalm 13 verse 2 how long shall i take counsel in my soul having sorrow in my heart daily Some people are sorrowful daily. They sit and meditate, meditate and meditate and they are sorrowful. Daily they are sorrowful. In Psalm 38 verse 17. Psalm 38 verse 17. For I am ready to halt. I am ready to fall. I am ready to, I am about to collapse. I am about to collapse and my sorrow is continually before me. 
you may say pastor am i sorrow is continually before me in the morning in the night in the travel continually my sorrow is before me psalm 39 verse 2 i was dumb with silence i held my peace even from good some people will say in an extreme sorrowful situation it's in the bible don't say pastor is talking about me pastor is talking about me or uncle is talking about me it's in the bible i was dumb with silence i held my peace even from good onnu pesala nalladhu kuda pesala nalladhu kuda pesa pesana thana prachan pesama vaaya moodi vittirukken and my sorrow is stirred pesnalum sanda pesatalum sanda ooma mari irka i was dumb with silence munar i held my peace i zip my lips <laughs> even from good nalladhu kuda na pesalenga and my sorrow is stirred you don't have deliverance from your sorrow because you don't talk your sorrow is increasing so a proverb 15 13 by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken and because of the sorrow of heart the spirit is broken the lord gives us victory the lord gives us a month where we are going to rejoice just turn with me very quickly one chronicle chapter 4 verse 9 we read about a man called jabez and jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his mother called his name jabez saying because i bear him with sorrow jabez means sorrow they all are calling him jabez jabez in english we can say they all were hey sorrow come here man hey sorrow do this man the teacher was saying sorrow stand up man everybody was saying sorrow 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 he was broken and verse ten and jabez called on the god of israel so this sorrow started praying to god of israel if anybody is here sorrowful pray to god of israel saying oh that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thine hand might be with me and that thou e- uh, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me and god granted him that which he requested and he became a very honorable man than all his peers in your college among your relatives among your friends you will become the more honorable man everybody said saro 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 and you would become the more honorable man some 127 verse 2 it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows for so he giveth his beloved sleep getting up early sitting up late but eating the bread of sorrow eating the bread of sorrow but if you are beloved to the lord the translation is wrong it is not that he gives the beloved sleep the literal meaning is he gives the beloved in sleep if you are true to god if you are loving god if you are found in the presence of god even if you are asleep the lord will bring your blessing to you even without your labor the lord is able to bless you or your little labor the lord will give you a greater blessing you did everything for the lord your prayer your bible reading your ministry your church going your work in the house helping your parent you do everything and you got only one hour to study one hour you study even in the sleep the lord will help you remember what you have studied and what you have studied will come in the exam and you will pass in flying colors and somebody would study for 10 hours 10 hours a life that not pleasing to god may not be able to even write the examination fall sick or something or what all expected need not come or some mental pressure it's a vain thing just i show you one verse Ecclesiastes 2:23 For all his days are sorrows and his travail grief ya his heart taketh not rest in the night this is also vanity in tamil it is beautiful avan naatkal ella aluppu ullad tired 
running here running there doing this doing that avan naatkal ella alupullathu avan velaigal varutham ulladhu avan velaigal varutham ulladhu raathrilum manasukku elaipaarudhil even in the night there is no rest for the mind raathrilum avan manasukku elaipaarudhil illai iduvum maaye just make a note of these verses which i say psalm 53 verses 3 and 4 jesus was a man of sorrow and he is acquainted with our sorrows he knows what is being sorrow for he knows what is dejection he knows what is misunderstanding he knows what is rejection by others he understands our sorrows come it all your sorrows unto him just make a note of these verses isaiah 35 10 isaiah 51 11 jeremiah 31 12 jeremiah 31 13 almost the same thing to say to me just finish Isaiah 35:10 And he ransom and the ransom of the Lord shall return if you are delivered of the Lord from all your evil from all your peer pressures from all your family pressures from all your social pressure from all your alupu from all your vela you be beloved to the Lord even in your sleep the Lord will grant you a prophet it is not because we are running about it's not because our travel i don't say we should not work but our profit is not proportionate our work it is not because we study the lord has given me good knowledge intelligence i praise god for that but in my college i could not be successful because some situation during my post graduation i came into the lord the lord blessed my studies Sundays I will not touch my book. I will serve the Lord. I go preach, give testimony. Before my examination I was down with chicken pox. I thought that I could not write my examination. I could not study my lessons. So was all over my face. Even I could not open my eyes. Somehow just before the examination, one or two days, the Lord gave me some healing, special permission. I wrote an examination. I knew very well that I would fail. You know what my father said? Surely you may not be able to pass, but don't worry. Just go sit in the examination and come. It's an experience. Seeing the question paper, writing, is an experience. Just as if you are appearing for a model examination, just go and come. Don't worry about passing or failing. I knew very well that I would not get through. For the glory, for the glory, for the glory of the Lord, I tell you. But the Lord said that I would get through. I never had even a remote choice, a chance to believe that I would pass. The result came. It was published in the university. First day, second day, third day, I didn't go. I knew, I knew, I mean in my heart somewhere, I thought that I would fail. some corner at least the third class i might have passed in the presence of god i tell you i search for my number in the third class list it was not there some go i thought second class it was not there i knew that i would not pass so i didn't pass i thought okay let me see the first class only very few children in the first class that are from our college out of 96 33 students failed out of 96 33 students failed only 63 passed only very few in the first class then somehow i found my number in the first class and it is not with a line 13 to 17 my number was put exclusively may 13 to 17 
then 19, then 21 to 25, like that. My number was given separately, there can't be a mistake. I could not believe I passed in the first class. After six days, or after three or four days, in those days it will take time for the mark sheet to come. My professor phoned me and said, Robert, in mathematics I come first in the university. In my sleep, in my sickness, where I could not put my labor, the Lord gave me victory. The Lord gave me victory. My dear brother, my dear sister, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. Everlasting joy upon their hearts. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. When you are delivered from your bondage, from your bad habits, from your emotions, from your stress level, in the name of Jesus I tell you, when you are a ransom of the Lord, when you are delivered of the Lord, Kartaral meet Kapattavar, Ananda Kalipudan Padi, Siyonikavarubar, come to Zion with songs of everlasting joy. And everlasting joy upon their heads. Nithya Mahilchi Avaral Talain Melirka. And they shall obtain joy and gladness. Sandosham Mahilchi Madevar. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Sanjalam and Dukkamum Odipo. From your slavery. The Lord is giving you victory. Shall we all stand to our feet? As long as you are slave to something, as long as you are slave to bad habits, as long as you are slave to vain pride, as long as you are slave to social pressure, they got a fridge, I should buy a fridge. Sometime back, one of our believers was telling me about a family that was in trouble. He said that family could not be blessed because social pressure. Yara Sandakaranga Frijuangana, Nangla Frijuang. Having with a flat TV in the Namutla flat TV. Having a LED TV Wangitanga, Namutla LED TV Wangirana. That family could not come out from their sorrows. As long as you are under some slavery, you cannot rejoice, you cannot have celebration. The calendar celebration will bring you to deeper slavery. I love to pray for you. This is the month in which your sorrow will be turned into joy. This is the month in which your mourning will be turned into a good day. God knows your sorrows. If you are ransom of God, if you are ransom of God, if you are delivered from your age, you come to Zion with songs and you, ever lost, uh, you will come to Zion with songs. You see you in a part to party to a sabaki ara the neki in a part to party to her. And everlasting joy will be upon your head. Nithya Mahilchi and Tali Melarka. And you shall obtain joy and gladness. Sandosham Mahilchi Madeva. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Sanjalam and Dukkam, sighing and not over here. See you in a penna brojan. Coil in a penna brojan. You could not come to Zion in singing. You could not come to Zion in dancing. You could not come to Zion in rejoicing. You could not go to your prayer. You could not gather for your family altar with joy. Ponga Daddy. Papa Summa, Betla Kasila Javan 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 and Javatakwala, Ningle Javchikonga. Sapra Kala Palvanga Mudila Nebriya Chapa. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, I feel in my spirit, it's a prophecy to somebody. In this month, your joy is, your sorrow is turned into joy. Your mourning is turned into a good day. Those who take it for you, lift up your hands and praise God. Those who take it for you, Lift up your hands and praise God. 
the lord delivers you from whatever your pressure may be whatever your pressure may be the lord delivers you the lord told me the lord told me it is because of the social pressure it is because of the peer pressure it is because my social status vain pride i must have this if that pastor has got a big car i must have a bigger car even we get that pressure many pastors have got that pressure my dear brother my dear sister if you are ransomed of the lord kartharal ningal meedkapadivirulana ananda kalipudan sivanukku varuveer he will come to zion with singing dear father god we whole heartedly i pronounce your blessings upon your people the lord tells you thus says the lord thus says the lord thus says the lord you in this month your sorrow will be turned into joy thus says the lord in this month your morning will be turned into a good day pura shanadi maharati rabala bless your people lord send them back home with your heavenly benedictions